There's a problem with recording. There's a problem with recording? Okay. Okay. So it appears to be recording, I hope. Uh, so the agenda is very small. I'm going to do a very quick over overview of Frevo. You can see there's literally two or three slides because there are a couple of people on here who are not completely familiar with Frevo. And then we'll jump right into a demo. Real quick, uh, what is it we do? Uh, very simple. We provide our customers uh, with very simple visual tools, uh, form designer, workflow designer, visual workflow wizards, uh, visual rule builder, uh, wizards to connect to uh, external systems. And uh, our, our uh, existing people at our uh, customers are using these products to automate you know, day to day business processes, purchase order, employee onboarding, travel authorization, a variety of processes. And in many cases, they're doing that in extremely short periods of time, days, a uh, couple of weeks, without needing to use uh, very expensive and, of course, very scarce IT resources. Uh, so that's the value proposition, uh, really 100% visual workflow automation, uh, real workflows, business workflows that anyone can, can use. We have a number of customers, uh, over 800, uh, many customers here that you recognize. We do have a number of customers in the education space, uh, universities that you'll see on here, uh, K-12 schools as well, but we also have customers spread out all over the world in all verticals, um, all areas from government to retail to manufacturing to nonprofit organizations and also, as I mentioned, schools and uh, colleges as well. So a lot of customers are using this for as I mentioned, things like purchase orders, expense reports, travel claims, employee onboarding, permission forms in the schools in particular, transportation forms, sales orders. Uh, we also have a lot of customers that use Frevo for, uh, for its database integration, particularly, uh, uh, particularly its ability to connect to SQL databases. Um, and it's, Frevo provides very powerful capabilities in this arena where you can create forms without any coding that will let you connect to a SQL database and dynamically display information, for pull information from that database and display it on the form, um, create new uh, records in the database, update existing records, et cetera. So customers are using it for a wide variety of really routine day-to-day -day stuff, things that they do on a normal everyday basis within their organization. And lastly, why are they choosing to use Frevo? I've sort of alluded to this already. Uh, mainly because uh, of the reasons outlined there. First off, it actually meets real-world business requirements. So these everyday workflows in or businesses and, and universities and uh, other organizations aren't just trivial, uh, you know, simple forms with, uh, with, with no routing. Um, they, have, uh, into, uh, they have a lot of business rules and dynamic behavior. That, so, for example, we need to show or hide a section depending on your answer to question one. We need you to answer question two. Forms are often very lengthy um, and may need to be subdivided into sections, tabs, perhaps even multiple steps in a in a in a in a, in a flow. Uh, you may need to calculate do a do a number of calculations in there. Uh, typically, these forms also need to uh, these workflows also may, as I mentioned, integrate with SQL. Um, businesses have either Active Directory or some sort of SAML integration. They don't want to be able to, they don't want to have to create users again in Frevo. So want the ability to integrate with your existing uh, uh, authentication and authorization system. It needs to work on mobile devices, PDFs, so generating PDFs like a government W4 and I9 or a variety of other PDFs is also often a common business requirement. Electronic secure uh, signatures, another key requirement. Uh, nobody wants to uh, route a form around electronically only to have the person print it, uh, sign it by uh, using a pen on paper and then scan it back and send it on electronically. That's crazy. So you want to be able to sign it electronically. Uh, and then being able to talk to things like SharePoint and other systems and, and a variety of other requirements. And, and Frevo just has powerful capabilities that really meet all of these business requirements. The other thing is that, as we've alluded to, these easy, very visual designers. It's uh, one of the biggest challenges in most of our customers, and everybody has this challenge, is just there's not enough uh, talent. So it's hard to find um, IT talent programmers um, to retain them, and there's always more uh, work for them to do than, uh, than there's uh, available time. So being able to 
to spread the work around to more people within the organization. Power users that are familiar with Excel, for example, can very easily create forms with complex business rules, uh, business logic using our visual rule builders, which we'll give you a look at that. Um, and finally, rapid positive ROI. Uh, we have a tool on our website that lets you um, uh, assess your ROI. But uh, one of our very recent PO workflows, for example, we, we literally took 45 person hours. Now, don't get me wrong, it did take the actual calendar time to build this out was a little bit longer because there was some back and forth with the customer. But the actual um, time that was, that was spent on creating this workflow from start to production was literally 45 hours, which is incredibly fast. Um, so that's why uh, a lot of these customers are using Frevo. So what I'm going to do uh, now is jump right into a demo of the of the software. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to use a purchase order approval. Uh, this is one of the most common workflows automated with Frevo. It might be the most common workflow, maybe a tie with employee onboarding. Uh, purchase order and employee onboarding are definitely the two most common workflows automated with Frevo, although there are a number of others like travel authorizations and absence records and things that I mentioned earlier as well. So this is a simple example of a PO. Everybody. Um, we have customers with all kinds of different uh, purchase order workflows and everybody's workflow is different. But here's an example. We'll keep it simple for this demo. Starts with an employee who fills in a form saying, here's what I need to purchase. Uh, that form is then routed to his or her specific manager. Obviously, you don't want to route to any manager. You want to route to my manager for approval. Uh, and if the manager approves, um, and the amount is greater than $10,000, it requires an additional step of approval from the VP. Um, of course, the manager can also reject it back to the employee for uh, clarification or correcting errors or things of that nature. So here's, uh, here's again a uh, route to a specific manager. We're gonna route to a role using a VP. We're gonna show you how to do conditional routing, uh, dynamic forms, so the form itself will have a number of rules. Uh, anonymous routing is also supported in Frevo. We're going to skip that in this particular demo, but this is a, this is where you can route the form to anybody who does not require a, a role or a login to Frevo. So a sales order is an example where I might be a salesperson who fills in a sales order. It gets approved by my manager, but then the next step goes outside my organization to a to a, to the customer for signature. And you obviously want to make that simple. You don't want them to have to remember passwords and log in in order to sign a sales order. So that's where anonymous routing comes in. Notifications. Uh, so when a, when a form is routed to me, I get notified. Escalations and rejections. Uh, so if I don't process it in, uh, in a timely manner, it can escalate to a different person or it can send me additional reminders. I can certainly reject it. Um, and then we also have save load capability where you can save the form to a, a partially completed form, save it and come back to it later. So let's jump into a, a, a demo here and let's start with the first step in, in many of these workflows is literally the form. So I'm going to click on new here. Actually, first, before I do that, you can see that I'm logged in to, to Frevo as designer at Ashish.com. So this is a multi-tenant application. Um, and what that means is it's available in the cloud and it's available on-premise as well, but it's the same software and really on the on-premise version is essentially you're creating your own private cloud. In both cases, it's multi-tenant. You can create as many tenants as you want. And a tenant is really just a domain within um, the application that shares underlying compute and data database resources. Um, but the, the forms, flows, submissions, all kinds everything within a tenant uh, or domain is completely separated from other tenants or domains that are shared using the same shared infrastructure. So I'm logged in as a designer user. There are really, I guess, two types of users. There are just people who can design forms and flows, and then there are the rest of the world who can, who can, who can use these forms or flows or uh, view submissions, but they can't create or design flows. So the first step, as I mentioned, is to create a form. So I'm gonna click new here. Um, you, if there are any templates installed, you'll be able to select a template. I don't have any installed here. So I'm going to click finish over here and come to the form designer. So this is the, uh, make this a little bigger. It's easier to see. So this is a, um, this is one of the, this is one of the main, um, applications within Frevo. This is how you design forms. You can see on the left side here, there's a rich palette of controls. You've got drop down radio, checkbox, text, text area, standard HTML controls. 
got a number of controls like date, email, money, etc., that are just pre-formatted, so they'll enforce validation. So an email will make sure that what's entered into the into the control is an actual email address. You've got a lot of grouping controls, sections, it's a collapsible section, repeating things, tabbed views, panels of side-by-side layouts, tables. This is just a message on the uh, HTML message, essentially, on the form, a hyperlink, a button, attach, this is for attachments, uh, signatures, PDF generation, and then there are a few other controls in here, true or false, uh, checkbox, um, and a couple of others on there. So the palette is really rich, and you can create uh, significant complex forms, which is one of the most important business requirements our customers have. Down here is a custom palette, uh, and in here, you can create, pre-create your own controls, publish them to the custom palette, and anybody, any designer in your tenant can use that custom control. Uh, so for example, you might create an address control with a uh, with a street, city, zip, uh, state, with your own validation, business rules applied to those particular controls, publish it in custom, and down the road, someone else can just drag that control out and all of that behavior, layout, everything comes back. Down below that is a properties panel, uh, and the properties panel displays the properties of what's currently selected in the form. It's a pretty standard paradigm. In this case, uh, the form itself has been selected, Um, sorry, the form um, has been selected and um, we're going to change its name. So we'll call it Bo Demo Form One, something like that, whatever. And you've got the, uh, you see that the name changes in, in the form here. So now let's drag and let's create the form. Creating the form is really simple. Uh, you know, you just drag and drop control. So I'm going to drag a text control here. I'm going to call it first, first name. Um, that's a pretty wide first name, so you can click on the style control here and change its width. So you can see that a control can be from one column to 12 columns wide. And uh, I've, I've just changed its uh, width over here to four columns. Um, and what 12 columns uh, wide means that the canvas in any form here is 12 columns wide. So any combination of controls that add up to 12 columns in width will fit next to uh, next to each other on the same line, otherwise they'll flow onto the next line. So now I'm gonna drag another text control here. We'll call it last name. I can drag another control in here, we'll call it email address. Um, so uh, you can see that it's very easy to drag and drop and create these controls. Um, I'll add a few others going a little faster here. We'll call it section. Let's call it employee. We can drag this first name into the section, put the last name in there, put an email address in there as well. You can see how the section is collapsible. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if I drag in a, a separate, another mm -hmm. control now, this is too wide to fit on, on that line, so it's gonna basically go flow automatically onto the next line. Uh, controls have properties. Um, so this properties panel, as you can see, um, applies to the control itself. Um, so quickly going through those properties, um, you can ignore most of them, but you can put help in the control. So you can say last name is required. You can put any HTML help in here. Um, you'll see this help text create, when I when help text is present, it creates a little icon over here that you can click on to, to get help. Hint is just um, a tooltip, whatever I type in there, when you hover over it will appear as a tooltip. Um, you can make a control required simply by clicking on it. You see that it gets this yellowish background. Of course, since if you don't like the yellowish background, you can you can change the the appearance of a required control at will. Uh, controls can also be hidden. If you uncheck visible, this control will not be visible. Uh, you can see using the, that it, that it has a gray background indicating that it's not going to be visible. You can enable or disable a control also simply by unchecking uh, and checking the enable flag. So there are a number of properties in here. We're not gonna, we're gonna spend too much time going through all of them. Um, you can create pretty complex forms or very complex forms within Trevo. So for example, let me drag and drop a table in here. And you'll see that a table has multiple columns. It's too slow, this server. I'm sorry, I'm on a test server. Um, so it's running a little bit slow. I apologize for that. So you can call it item description or whatever, you can call it whatever you want in there. 
And you'll see that you can create tables with, uh, with multiple columns in there. I can drag uh, another, um, another uh, control from the palette directly into the table and it just creates uh, a specific number of, um, of um, uh, it, it creates, it, it drops into the table and creates, automatically creates the relevant number of rows. The table itself can have a number of properties. You can specify a minimum or maximum number of occurrences. If you specify, for example, a minimum of one, it's going to mean that one row in the table is always required. Um, and uh, a few other things, you can drag in and upload control in here. Um, oh, I don't think I dropped that in properly. Sorry about that. Where is it wrong? I can drag and upload control and uh, this is just an attachment. So once I have a control, this control in here, um, I can click on its properties and you'll see that there are a number of properties in here. I can specify a minimum number of attachment, the maximum number of attachment, the maximum size, the name of the attachment, what kind of files are allowed in the, uh, allowed as attachments. And of course I can take, change the label in here, uh, whatever. Something in here. Um, and then you can also drag in, for example, a signature control. Uh, so this just lets you, um, lets a person click there and sign, sign their name in the control. And there are a variety of other uh, uh, signature controls possible as well. So, um, you know, there's a lot more. I could spend a lot, lot of time just on the form designer, but hopefully you get the idea that, that designing forms is, is very simple um, in Frevo. Most of our customers have told us that creating a form is really simple. It's not a big deal. Uh, so let's take a look at, a, at an example form in here that I've created. You can always click the test button here. So here's the form, um, you know, a, a, a sort of a skeleton of a PO form that's been created in here. You can see how there's, there's uh, order information. There's an attachment for uh, uh, upload control for attaching files. You can attach whatever files you want in here. Um, the signature control allows you to sign your name using your mouse or, or on a mobile phone, the touchscreen device. So uh, now that we've uh, taken a look at the form, the next step in here is to take a look at some, some rules. So that's one of the most common and really important things uh, in Frevo that customers use, customers really like about Frevo. Now, prior, uh, until relatively recently, you had, to, you had to have some JavaScript knowledge to be able to create these rules. But Frevo now has a visual rule builder that makes it so easy to create these rules. Anybody who's familiar with the spreadsheet can pretty easily create uh, business rules. So in this form here, I've got an employee section with first name, last name, email, and manager. I've got this order information section with a table as item, quantity, unit price, and subtotal. Notice that the subtotal is grayed out, so we're gonna automatically compute the subtotal by multiplying quantity and price. Same thing for the grand total. Uh, and we've got a few sections here for manager and VP approval. We'll get to those sections a little bit later, okay? So let's create a simple rule here. So to create a rule, you click on the on this icon here to go to the rules page, click plus to create a new rule. Um, let's call this rule initialize the form or something like that. And um, click on run builder. Since this is an initialization rule only, we'll check initialization. Um, and what do we want to initialize? So I think there's a field on here called PO date. So like when I click next, I'm gonna come to a, a, a set of actions. So the set action PO date, I'm gonna set the PO date to, um, and now here's where it's again, really similar to a spreadsheet. Um, as you start typing, there's a, a, a list of built-in functions that starts appearing down below. I'm gonna set the first name to, where's two? Um, and again, you start typing user and you see there's a fu function called user first name and you can set the first name to the user first name. So you can set as many of these fields as you want in here, last name, to, and now it's obvious it will be user last name. Function in here and click finish and you see that the rule, um, uh, you know, a representation of the rule appears down there. If you want, you can click on this rule code and see the underlying uh, rule, uh, the JavaScript code that's been generated. 
And then Frevo does still have the functionality that uh, if you want, if you have JavaScript expertise or there's something particularly complex you want to do that can't be done with the rule builder, you can click this edit code button and then just edit the code yourself and write whatever JavaScript you want in there. So it's got a lot of flexibility, but the idea here is that the most common things are very easy to do without the need for writing any code. Let me create a couple more uh, relatively simple rules just to show you how easy it is. So sometimes you want to calculate subtotals. In this case, I want to calculate the subtotals when I've got something in unit price. So when unit price is filled and quantity, I guess, is quantity. So when my unit price and quantity have values, right? I'm going to multiply the two of them and set the subtotal to quantity multiplied by unit price. And that's it. So uh, it's so easy. Uh, anybody, obviously, hopefully, if they agree that anybody can do this, um, What's nice here is remember that the, the subtotal, the quantity, the price, these are all repeating rows in a table. You don't really have to worry about all this stuff. You can see if you want in the rule code that it's figured out, oh, subtotal, quantity, price are repeating things. I'm gonna generate all the necessary code in there to ensure that it automatically handles repeating functionality in this case. Similarly, creating a grand total is completely trivial. Uh, Click the builder, there's really no condition here. And what we're going to do is set the grand total to, I guess it's the sum of the subtotals. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, and this is going to automatically set the grand total to the sum of the subtotals. So it's very easy to create rules uh, using the visual rule builder again. As you've noticed, it's not, there's no complex programming required in here. Anybody can create these kinds of rules. Um, but if you wanted to, you could write that kind of complex code as well. Okay. Again, so I, I've, uh, rather than create a, a ton of rules here, uh, we've got, I've got a form in here that, that already has several of these rules created. Let's take a, let's run it. You'll see that in this form here, the first name, last name, email address, and manager are automatically initialized with a business rule. The PO number and the PO date are automatically initialized for the PO number. We just we just use the current date. You can, you can obviously use any algorithm you want for the PO number. The subtotal will be automatically computed. Um, so I could type red digits in here. And I bought 11 of them and the price is $100. And you see that the subtotal is being computed as is the grand total. And I bought 121 of these and there was $13.71. And you see again how the subtotal and the grand total are automatically being computed. Um, one thing you'll notice down here is, the, uh, is this debugging console, if you will. Uh, in this mode, when you click to the test button down here to to pull up your, your example form, um, it shows that this debug console down below. And what you see here is essentially all the rules running. So if something's not working correctly, for example, or if you're confused about why, what's going on in, 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 when creating forms with significant number of rules and lots of dynamic behavior, you can always look at it and it's gonna tell you, I ran this rule called calculate subtotal. This is why it was triggered. Here's what happened. Here's the actual rule. And here are the, the, the things that I actually did. I set these values. And of course, you can clear this debug console. Um, so start from the beginning. Now, if I create three widgets in here, uh, the rule will fire again. And you can see just what happened in this set of actions in here as well. Another rule I have in here is, I think um, I had a rule when I sign, the date will automatically be populated. So you see, as soon as I sign, the, the current date got automatically populated. So, so here, this form now um, has a number of rules uh, related to calculations, initialization, populating, pre-populating dates, and so on and so forth. Um, I think there's also a rule in here, yeah. So it also, there's also another rule here to show high things. So in this case, remember we said that the purchase order will route to the VP if the grand total exceeds $10,000. So we put in a little uh, indication to the end user saying, 
By the way, FYI, your grand total exceeded $10,000. It requires VP approval. It'll automatically route to the VP. You really don't need to worry about it at all. So that, that's also an example of a business rule. Very easy to create using the visual rule builder and really useful so people don't get confused when they fill out, uh, fill out these forms. So now, uh, now that we've got this example uh, form without and with a bunch of rules and without any routing, um, the next step is to stick this in a flow because we actually want to route it. So I'm going to click on this flows um, menu item here to go to the flows uh, flow screen. And I'm click on new here to load, uh, to create uh, a new flow. So you'll see this is a blank flow here. We'll call it PO demo flow one or whatever, something like that. You'll see there's a start and an end and nothing else here. Um, and I've gone in the palette here, um, the forms that are available within my application to, to drag and drop into this flow. So we're gonna drag this form called PO no routing. This is the one which, we, which I just showed you, which has a number of rules created for everything but the actual routing. Um, so I'll do a couple of things here. So I'm gonna create some, click this link or button here to create a couple of steps. Um, so remember the, uh, when we saw the, the workflow itself, it's going from employee to manager to VP. So we'll create a second step here for the VP as well. And the idea here is that the same form is, is being routed from uh, employee to manager to VP. It's just going to look different um, um, along the way for each step. So sort of simulating in the, in the physical world, if I've got a paper form and a clipboard, I fill in my part, then I, then I take it to my manager to get a signature, and then I walk it down the hall to the VP to get the signature. So um, every one of these steps here has properties. So let's take a look at them. This one is... Uh, you click the little gear icon there and the properties panel comes up. In this case, I'm gonna simply change this to employee. I guess I don't want this one to be printable. Um, looking at a few of the other tabs in here, there's nothing to us, nobody to assign to here. This is the first step in the workflow. So there'll be no notification, no assignment, really no messages, uh, preconditions or escalations, nothing else to really do in this step of the workflow. So I'm simply gonna click submit here. So I'm gonna say the first step here is, is uh, employee. The second step here, again, is, uh, is the manager. So I'm gonna change its name to, the, to manager. Um, in this particular form, I think I had a button, I had a control called manager continue. So I'll, I'll just do that in here. You'll see, you'll see how when I start typing a, a name of a control, a little drop down appears letting me select which control uh, which control I'm going to use in here. So the, there's auto complete in here that allows you to create, uh, to you know, select controls from the form uh, for dynamic uh, behaviors in here. Um, but the auto complete ensures that you don't make a mistake by you know, the, the control by selecting something wrong. In here. So this is uh, in this case I'm going to change the continue label at that the label that's displayed at the bottom dynamically. And the reason I'm going to do that is if the amount is less than 10,000, the label will say one thing. If the amount is greater than 10,000, it'll say another thing. Um, let's look at the assignment tab. In this case, what, what we wanted to do was we wanted to assign the label to, to my manager. So if you remember, in the employee section, we had uh, some controls, first name, last name, email address, and my manager. So what we're going to do here is assign this to a particular user. So when I type my, you'll see down again that control template shows up, my manager. So what we're doing in here is assigning the, uh, assigning the step here to the value of that control, my manager, and we use the business rule to set the value of that control to the ID of my manager. So essentially, uh, what's going to happen is when I run the form as an employee, that control will be set to my manager, let's say Jerry, and then it'll be routed to that user, Jerry. I can change this uh, uh, task notification. So this is the email that gets sent to my manager when that task is assigned. So I can change the, the subject in here. It's PO from, again, the same thing, first name, last name for your approval. Uh, you can change the message in here as well. Similarly, the messages down here, this will, uh, this is the task information. Uh, so these messages, uh, 
control what gets displayed, for example, in the task list, the pending message is what's displayed on the screen and the history message in the audit trail. You can see, of course, that there's help down here indicating what each of these things do. So again, I'll just use the same thing. Um, PO from first name, last name, I don't know. Let's add one thing here. So we've got a control in there for grand total. Uh, that's good. So we've got a we've got a little uh, task information in there. Um, rejection. Uh, we do want to be able to reject the flow from here. So we don't want to reject it to here. So let's uncheck this. And what this means is that the flow cannot be uh, subsequent steps cannot reject the flow to the manager. But from this step, I can reject two prior steps that allow rejection. Okay, and and I think that's it in this case. So when I click submit over here, you'll see that uh, you see down here on the left side also a summary of what uh, the properties are. Save load is enabled. The task assigned to is assigned to my manager. You've got a few messages in here, uh, and you can reject from here. This step is slightly different, uh, so let's quickly go through it. So we'll call it uh, the VP step. Um, We'll uncheck save load here, which just means that the save button goes away. Um, on the assignment side here, instead of signing to a particular user now, we're going to assign to a role. So I'm going to just type VP, and you'll see again the, uh, the drop down pick list shows up. I'm going to assign to this role VP. You'll notice that when I assign to VP, the email grays out because it will never uh, get assigned to email. So it's automatically setting up validation for you. Again, this new task uh, can be changed. The messages can be changed in here as well. So same thing again, you've already seen this. Um, Google, um, what's different in this step here is if you remember in the workflow, we had a condition that this step would only execute if the uh, amount was greater than, than $10,000. So you do that in this precondition step here. So we're gonna click to run the precondition builder. So let's click here. And you'll see the same rule builder uh, screens appear. Of course, in this case, there are no actions, just the condition phase in here. So when I click add condition, and it was total, yes, grand total, um, is more than, I guess you know, the literal value of 10,000. So all it's saying is that when the grand total is more than 10,000, this step will be run. You can enter a, you can enter a precondition description here so that it's displayed. Totally greater than 10,000. And when I click submit here, you see how the, the workflow automatically changes. So it inserts a, a condition step in there, indicating that the, with the, you know, whatever description you typed in there, and uh, only if that condition is true, the yes side will the VP step execute, otherwise it will bypass that step. So this is an example of, uh, of, again, using visually using the rule builder or screens of the rule builder to create this kind of dynamic behavior. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to show you here the, visually is how you can use the rule builder to, to show and to, to control these manager approval, VP approval type of steps so that the form changes depending on the step that you're in. So once again, let's go to the rule builder, click plus. We'll create a simple one here. So we'll call it on employee step. So what do I want to do on the employee step? Um, really, what you can do is see, you see when the when the rule builder is being run in the context of a flow, the, the when um, has an additional um, entry here called current step. So you can say when the current step is, and you can choose one of these steps, it's employee. Um, I'd like the employee section uh, to be expanded, for example. I, I can say whatever I want here. And if it's, uh, if it's not the employee step, then I'd like this employee step to be collapsed. So I'm just using this as an example. And that's, that's again, uh, an example of how you can create uh, these kinds of rules in here to show or hide sections depending on where you are in the workflow. So another uh, very common example here is, let's say I'm on the manager step, so this is on or after the manager step. This is another common scenario which is that when I'm on or after the manager step, so manager or VP, I want the manager section to be visible, otherwise I want it to be invisible. So I want the manager approval section um, as visible, otherwise it should be invisible. Um, 
that's it. That's it. You know, so it's very easy to create these business rules in here that are that are very um, uh, that are, that create this kind of dynamic behavior in the form, allowing you to route the workflow from person one to person two to person three, and the form changes. As you go along. So now, lastly, let's take a look at running this particular workflow. Save it out of here. Uh, so the only other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to put this in a space. So a space is just a portal that's built into Frevo. So uh, I'm sorry, one thing uh, out there is I do have a completed workflow in here, a PO flow. So we'll use this PO flow and put it into a space. I've deployed this PO flow in here. And I've got a space uh, called intranet in here that I already created. And a space is just a portal, as I indicated. Uh, in the menu here, I've got a link for PO flow. I've got my tasks and variety of other things that are automatically generated by Frevo and, Frevo, and I've got a login button as well. So let's run this workflow, but run it from the context of the space in here. So I'm going to click test here, and you'll see that the space comes up. Uh, you can publish this space link on your intranet or on mobile devices, however you want. Um, and I'm going to go into finance, PO flow. Of course, you can change finance, or you can change the names uh, of those menu items, however you want. Again, you'll see the PO number was created. Let's type, let's go do our usual stuff in here. Yeah. We've got a few of these. Let's make sure that gets above ten thousand dollars. So it's above ten thousand dollars. So it's going to route to the VP. <clears throat> I'm going to click on Add Files here, and I'll just add some random file just for demonstration purposes. And then I'm going to sign this in here. And you'll see uh, when I click Continue here, the PO is now going to be sent to my manager for approval. Um, an email notification would also be sent to my manager. Now, uh, I'm going to try and run this on my phone. Okay, so uh, here's, the, here's the same uh, space visible on my phone. So one of the advantages of using a space, and the reason I want to show that to you, is that the space is automatically adjusts or changes uh, depending on the device you're in. So on, my, on your phone, the space looks completely different from, from the view on, on, a, on a desktop. It looks much more natural for that particular phone. So I'm going to click on this My Tasks button using my phone. You'll see here's the PO from James Kirk for me. I can click this button and look at its audit trail. Saying, OK. Um, I'm going to click the PO itself, and you'll see that the, the form appears. Once again, you'll see that the form is different. It looks different on a mobile device. Uh, you'll see the employee and order information sections are collapsed because I'm on the manager step, and now the manager section is visible. This section was not visible earlier on. The VP section is, is not visible because it's not relevant here. If I want to look at the employee information, I can expand it. You'll see how, again, the, the form is responsive and automatically adjusts to the, to the screen. The same thing for order information as well. Uh, you'll notice that the uh, button at the top says approve and send PO to VP. So uh, remember how we had set the button label to be dynamic. Very useful. Customers find that really useful. So it's very clear what's going to happen when I when I click this. So I'm going to click yes here, and then I'm going to click the sign button, and you'll see the, the sign, um, whatever the dialog came up. This time I'm going to sign with my finger on the touch screen. Click done. Click approve and send to VP. And you'll see that the message appears indicating that the PO was, was uh, sent to your to the VP. And the last step in here is to actually log in as the VP. So I have the same thing bookmarked here. I'm already logged in as the VP in here. I go into my tasks again. Um, and I can see what happens. Now, before I do this, one thing I wanted to show you is that as the person who submitted the form, sometimes you want to see where, what's going on. So you can look at, you can find your, uh, go to your task list and find the from the variety of ways search. And I just click on this recent button here. So you can see this VP approval form here and you can see, okay, I, I sent, it went to Karen and then Karen approved it and now it's waiting uh, for role VP. Here's when it was sent. You can click on this little I button in here if you're saying, but what exactly did I submit? I've forgotten. You'll see the form rendered in uh, read-only mode. Uh, uh, and it gives you the it, it tells you what you actually submitted, so you can easily find remember what you submitted in here. Um, finally, as the VP, I'm going to click the button again. You'll see employee order manager are all collapsed. The VP approval section is visible. I'm going to click yes, um, saying we need this stuff or whatever. 
Um, let's sign this section. You'll we'll see this is another type of digital signature. You can set this up this way where there's no pop-up. You don't have to sign with the mouse or, the, or your uh, finger. And I'm gonna click approve and finish PO and the PO was approved. And I think finally this, uh, you'll see some emails coming in, in here uh, and you'll see also that your PO uh, was approved and there's a, I forgot to attach the PDF. Sorry, I took, unfortunately forgot to, uh, forgot to attach the PDF, but you can easily attach the PDF um, off the PO to the, uh, attach the PDF of the PO to your screen as well. I mean, to your email notification as well. Um, so that's a, a quick look. You know, we went through we went through how easy it is to create the form, the business rules, the workflow, conditional routing, um, set up uh, routing to a specific user or to a role, uh, set up rejections, uh, and and running the form uh, in a space. We looked at the visual design, visual rule builder in particular, and how to create these um, these rules for dynamic behavior. Um, so hopefully that gives you an idea of how easy it is to create. A, uh, to automate or digitize these day-to-day -day workflows using Frevo, you know, using nothing but completely visual tools. Lastly, a number of resources on our website. I definitely guide you towards some of the video demos we have in here. So if you go to the videos section, it's under Get Help Videos. There are a number of examples: travel authorization, authorization purchase order, and employee onboarding. But then there's a product demo, kind of a really shortened synopsis of what I just showed you. This, it's a, it, this one runs through in six minutes, um, obviously skips a lot of stuff. Um, you can learn more about the visual rule builder in these short videos as well. And we also have detailed form design and workflow design tutorials down below in this, in this video section. Um, and then finally, we have a number of case studies as well as example forms and workflows on our website. Once again, customers, click on customers to view some of the case studies and under examples here, you can very easily just try out a number of examples, PO, employee onboarding, um, some database examples. This is connected to a live database. You can look at dynamic forms and so on and so forth. So that's, um, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for attending. Uh, you can, as I mentioned, uh, get information on our website, contact us at info at favor.com. You can follow the contact us link on our website and give us a call at the number there. Um, Hopefully we have a few minutes here for, for some questions. Uh, I think we have a few minutes for some questions. So yep. my colleague Courtney is helping. Courtney? Yeah, so we had a question about, um, are you able to trigger a workflow externally? So if somebody updates data in another system, can that trigger a trigger workflow? Um, you might know the answer actually. Um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Yes, in theory, um, yes, you can, you can certainly you can certainly trigger a Frevo workflow by invoking a URL or a programmatic uh, call to an API. So as long as um, as long as the uh, you know updating data in a third system can trigger an event of some sort that that uh, makes a request out to Frevo, that shouldn't be a problem. Now the workflow itself can have a, what we call a task for the first step. So what the other condition that the other thing that we required, I think, is that the workflow would uh, would need would need to click this task for first step in here, indicating that because it's programmatic, the first step has to go to somebody's task list in order for it to be performed. So I think the answer to that is yes. It's um, pretty straightforward. I think. Yeah. Um, I know you talked a little bit about the um, the security but how easy is it to integrate with Active Directory? Single sign -on sure. So the question was, how easy is it to integrate with Active Directory for single sign-on? Um, it's very easy. There are multiple mechanisms that we have. So Prevo directly integrates with Active Directory, and a lot of on-premise, a lot of customers with on-premise deployments use the Active Directory direct integration, Active Directory or any other app system. Um, so in this scenario, you log in and you see the login screen on Frevo and you log into Frevo, but the authentication is actually de uh, delegated behind the scenes. Frevo contacts your Active Directory and, and says, hey, is this valid? Uh, you can also pull attributes uh, from Active Directory about that person. Now, we also support SAML um, as well as single sign-on, both through Azure AD as well as through uh, you know SSO, it's sort of a standard uh, S Windows SSO deployment on premise. So short answer is uh, there are a variety of ways to integrate. We have a lot of customers using single sign-on uh, as well as direct integration with Active Directory. Um, 
How is it easy to translate a form? So where are the is it easy to translate a yeah, form? Sure. So um, Frevo supports all languages worldwide. So translating a form is pretty easy or a flow. So you click on the flow or form in here, you see this little uh, globe icon here. You cl click on it to internationalize and you download the, the strings for that form in the default locale. So what that basically gives you is, I think it's this one. It gives you uh, it gives you the the strings that are being used in the form. So this particular one has it, it's uh, unfortunately rather complex because there's some messages in there. Uh, but anywhere in here, you can provide translations for uh, for all of these strings or whichever strings you want, uh, whichever uh, strings are relevant. So this automatically generates all the the strings that are in use in your forms as well as a number of default strings. For example, um, you know error messages or, or or value if there are any problems. That, uh, that are uh, related to validation of data in the form, those strings are also automatically generated. And you simply provide translations in any language and then upload them in whatever language you want in here. The actual, which form is displayed, it depends on, it'll be automatically selected depending on the locale that is set up in your browser. Or of course, you can, you can override that and say, I wanna look at the French version or the whatever XYZ version of the form. Uh, also supports right to left languages, Hebrew, Arabic, uh, so worldwide support for um, all languages and all characters in those languages. Um, can a step in a workflow call an external process? Can a step in a workflow call an external process? Um, yes, through the wait notify mechanism. Um, so. So I think uh, if, I, if I understand the question correctly, it is can I essentially call a web service externally? And the short answer is, yeah, you simply take an HTTP uh, step in here and drop it in, it will tell you where it's dropping. And when you click on the step and click on its properties, it'll tell you, um, obviously you can change its name and you can say which, what's the URL that I want to, that I want to access. Um, and then there's, uh, there's, there's extensive documentation on what exactly happens when you access that URL. So in this, in this scenario, I don't know, I could put, obviously this is not gonna work because Yahoo is not a web service. But what happens here is as the employee, when I click submit, the next step, since it is this HTTP step, it's gonna uh, run, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna call that particular URL and it's gonna post some data to it and that's, that's all in the documentation. And then the workflow will pause until the web service comes back and notifies it and says, okay, here's whatever answer you requested and um, you can continue the workflow. Uh, there's also a lot of authentication that you can specify here, by the way, in, the, in your tenant. You know, there are properties that you can set up to indicate how to authenticate to that external web service. Um, you <laughs> um, okay. Can you, uh, can you use pages built by other CX tools as templates for controls to put skin? So I think probably the answer to that is no, but you can create templates in Frego. So I'm this. yeah. Uh, the, the question was, can you use templates created in other what tools? CX tools. CX tools? Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, I'm not sure what a CX tool is, uh, but but I don't believe you can use templates created in other tools like Visio or something else. Uh, but you can certainly create, um, as Courtney mentioned here, you can certainly create templates in Frevo. You, you saw how when I clicked new, uh, a panel appeared, a wizard appeared, or a, a panel appeared, I should say, that, that listed templates that were available in your, in your particular tenant. So you can deploy whatever templates you want in there. I'm kind of circling back to, um, oh, uh, he means a customer experience tool or page builders. Can you use those? So, so no. Yeah, and I don't know of, um, we don't really import. I mean, the only thing you can do for generating forms automatically is use a, what we call, what I showed you was a top-down approach to creating these forms by dragging and dropping controls. But we also support bottom-up creation of these forms, which is really based on a data model. So if you, you can publish a data model to Frevo that says, this is, this is what an employee is, the format is XML schema. So you can supply a schema that says, here's a, an employee. It can be a large, super complicated schema, and then by clicking a single button, the entire form will be generated. Um, has a number of um, features there that form can, will, uh, you know, so the, the form will ensure conformance to, to the schema. So the schema says these five fields are required and these six are optional. The five required fields will become required in the form. 
at runtime, the user won't be able to submit the form unless all five required fields are filled in. Schemas can provide all kinds of validation uh, requirements, and Frevo will support all of those. So the, 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 that support is extensive and it's very powerful, uh, but it may not be what you were really asking for. Um, circling okay. back to the web service question, can the web service provide data back in a JSON format? So it depends on how you're yes. returning. Yes, um, so you can provide the data in a variety of formats. So I showed you how to, how to call a web service using the HTTP uh, step in the workflow, but you can also call a web service from a, from a rule in a form. Uh, you can't do that using the visual rule builder um, because precisely that reason, because it doesn't really understand the format of the return data. But in a business rule in Frevo, you can, uh, you'll can you have to click edit code and in JavaScript, you can basically say, I want to call this web service and then uh, you're going to get back the JSON. Uh, assuming it returns JSON, you're going to get back the JSON and you can process that JSON within your JavaScript, uh, within your business rule. So we have a number of examples uh, of business rules doing exactly that on our, on our, in our documentation. And of course, just contact us. We're more than happy to answer and help you answer those questions. We have a lot of examples. Uh, it's a very, very common use case. Uh, and there are many examples of customers using business rules to invoke web services that return JSON. Um, and then, can you have two steps in a workflow trigger simultaneously? Um, no, you we mean like a for a fork join. We, so we don't currently, unfortunately, we don't currently support the fork join paradigm where you can have two steps trigger simultaneously. What you can do in here is have a step, uh, have the step in the workflow be in multiple people's task lists at the same time. So you can assign it to five different people, so it's sitting in their inbox. But when one of them picks up that workflow, the other four will be locked out for the duration that that person has locked the workflow. Um, and then you can put it back into the task list of the remaining four users and so you know, process it in that. So it's almost um, um, you know, parallel processing, essentially. Um, so anyway, it's simultaneously in multiple papers, uh, people's inboxes, but only one of them can access it at a time. Typically, in, in real business scenarios, not much of an issue uh, because the actual time that a person is processing that step is relatively small. Um, so again, there are many examples in the tutorials as well as on our website, and we're more than happy to show you examples of how that's done um, in Frevo. Um, and then I think the last one here, there's some questions about how you created the message control um, and how you created the role that show, you know, showed it and how you hit it. Um, so I think for there, just going to the documentation and, and showing the, where sure. the rule examples are is probably a good idea. Yeah, I can show you that, but that specific example is pretty simple. I just have a message control in here. Uh, you see that the visible is set to false, and then I have a rule. Um, uh, show hide the warning message. Um, so here's the rule that says when the grand total is more than $10,000, set the morning message as visible, otherwise set it as hidden, and that's it. So once that, when we, when we did, uh, that, that's simply gonna automatically show or hide that message control. But Courtney makes a good point here. If you go to docs.frevo.com, our documentation is pretty extensive in here. So inside user's guide here, you've got business rules, uh, and you've got, a. a, a significant amount of documentation on business rules, but what Courtney was pointing out here was these rules examples. There are a lot of examples of business rules that we've created and our customers have created in here, and the chances are very high that you're gonna find um, the business rule uh, sample that you need right here. I mean, there's, there's the exact one showing right. the business controls. And I guess showing or hiding controls, uh, so show a message based on selections and other uh, controls or show a message if a control contains data, it shows you exactly how to do that. Okay, so in this case, the only difference is that uh, it's not just that the control contains data, but the value is greater than the function. Pretty straightforward. And then I think everybody was just wondering too about sharing this presentation. It was either like today or tomorrow. Yes, absolutely. The, the presentation and the, the entire the, the, the session is being recorded, so once the webinar is over, we will be 
uh, within a day or two, uh, I'll try to do it today itself, actually publish this recording up to uh, and, and share the recording. You can actually find it, uh, eventually be able to find it right here. If you go to our website and click on webinars, um, you'll see this, this, the recording of this entire presentation. And then as I mentioned earlier also, actually it's on our homepage, this video on simple visual tools, as well as this demo on 100% visual workflow. But the recording will absolutely be available. Is that it? All right, well, thank you so much, everybody. I'm glad we managed to stay under one hour, just barely. I uh, really appreciate your time. Thank you for, uh, for attending this webinar. Hope you found it useful. If you, there's any, uh, any further questions we can answer, info at frevo.com or click the contact link on our website or call us at, where is that presentation? 203-208-3117 anytime. Thank you. Bye-bye.